please. Mobility, flow, and balance. You will need, hopefully, you've got a stick, right? I've just taken the broom end off of my stick. Um, I do have PVC poles. I, I went to Home Depot years ago and uh, for my group fitness class, and I had um, like sprinkler PVC um, cut down to um, five and a half feet long. And so I take those to class, but uh, for your in-home, most everybody has a broom. So why don't we start with our stick? And you're off and running, okay? So here we go. Shoulder circles. We are gonna do a version of this with hands in front, and then we'll do arms uh, with the hands holding the stick behind us, palms turned the other way. <laughs> when your hands sit as they are, palms turned back, I'm gonna plant a seed. This is what I see a lot of with people who are not really being mindful of what their arms are doing in relation to the rest of their body. So now relax, move your stick to the backside, turn your palms forward and do the same circles, okay? So you do not have to stand in place. You can walk yourself around your stick. Don't worry about moving the stick away from your body. Just let it connect to you right under your derriere. Your thumbs, can you put them on the other side of the stick so that they're with your index fingers? And you're, you're with the stick touching your bum and the hands kind of pushing into the stick, you should feel like the stick kind of just sits there, right? You don't have to have a firm grip on the stick. Why are we doing shoulder rolls? One, it should feel good. Two, as you come up and draw it back, you should feel like maybe you've got some little grinding um, adjustments happening, which shouldn't be painful. And if your head is sitting forward, I want you to tuck your chin, try to pull your cervical spine back so that everything gets stacked. And now can you alternate your arm? So you get to allow the elbow to have a little bit of a relaxed position. You can keep moving your body. I'm just standing still for the sake of demonstration and forward. So if I'm generally guiding you into reverse rotation, why would I encourage you to have the ability to forward roll your shoulders if that's where the shoulders spend most of their time, right? Because we still need to have the ability to control and fully lift and drive, okay? We want the joint to have as much action as we can get it. And now back, when you come up and you start cranking it back, I wanna make sure that you also get the sliding down, right? So don't short, don't short the movement and just pull the elbows back, get the lengthening arm aspect. All right, so now stop, push. Here's where you are gonna grab full hand grip. Your hands are a little bit wider than the width of your body, so don't hold it too tight, okay? And I want you to slide your shoulders down, tuck your chin, pull the stick back. The great thing about how I keep trying to remind you that your, your mobility, your flexibility work fully activates muscles. I don't know if you can see that, right? But if I take my elbows where they're supposed to be, which is wings, your shoulder blades rolled and tucked, and then we push the neck back and we lengthen the arms, your tricep aspect and your subscapular back positions are working. So I want you to roll Glide the stick down, tuck your chin, squeeze your buns, try to pinch your shoulder blades together and then move the stick off the body and release. Roll, 
push it down, chin glides back, buns tight, abs tight, the stick moves and the elbows should be really fully extended. All right, here we go. Release, lift and roll. Get the stick to push down, roll and retract the shoulders, tuck your chin, squeeze your buns, fully lengthened arms, pull the stick off of you and release. And now, no tension, you're dragging your stick up and down your back body. Again, you can keep moving around your space, all right? Can you put your thumbs on the other side of your bar so that the thumb is sitting right next to your index finger? Pull the stick up. This time, pull the stick up, pause. Are your elbows, this is where a mirror would come really in handy. Are the elbows floating out to the sides? I want you to look at the front of my shoulder right here, okay? You are going to try to lift your shoulders, roll them back, and tuck your elbows back. In your ideal world, your elbows would be trying to draw in towards a parallel line to one another. Mine aren't exactly parallel, but they're close to it. Slide the stick down, okay? Don't pull the stick up so high that you can't get your roll back, right? So how high can you move your stick where you're comfortable and the front of the shoulder is rolled back, the belly is pulled in and your buns are tight. Why do we need to stretch this aspect of that shoulder? Release, you're gonna do one more. Last week in a class, I mentioned, roll it back, that your shoulder mobility, okay, is the gateway to your upper body strength. With the stick pushing in your back and your retracted scaps, it's highly probable that you're driving your hips forward. I need for you to pull your middle body back, tuck your bun so that your trunk is stable while your arms are trying to get into their position and release. Okay, bring your chair into the equation. Your chair, it could be your coffee table that you're using, right? You don't have to move all of your furniture if you don't have a chair handy. It could be your ottoman. I'm gonna take you to something familiar and then we're going to add in a second component to it today because my goal is to give you enough stuff that you're familiar with that you can really feel confident that you're doing it right, but then keep advancing, but still gently, okay? So your shoulders are the gateway to your full upper body strength. So now we're gonna be working what doesn't seem like shoulder flexibility because it's under the arm and the tricep, connection right here, your lat, with your body in your downward dog, modified downward dog, I want you to let one hand drop off and reach for the opposite foot. How easy is it for you to get your hand to your foot? Switch sides. As you start reaching your hand to your foot, do your legs kind of buckle? Does, does, does your hip want to slide towards that foot because that's okay. So if you are into a bending leg as you receive the stretch, you're just going to alternate hand to foot, opposite foot that is, and just get into a little rhythm. I do not need to bend my legs, but I am because most people, that's what I find that they do. If you're going to commit to one leg bending, then make the other leg nice and straight because this is going to tie in to the next part of this stretch. Do one more on each side, and then we're going to reset for the next part. All right, come up a little bit. So now your legs are going to go even wider, and you're going to bend one leg. Here's the tricky part. We don't really even need the chair at this point, okay? But take your hand, okay? Push it against the knee. 
take the other arm, sweep the arm up, turn your head, let your bending leg side, maybe even work further away from the straight leg, twist up towards the ceiling, really straighten the straight leg and really bend the bent leg, turn your trunk up towards the high arm. And now rise. Oof. There is a gadget called a mobility stick that is probably seven feet long and it has a little bit of flexibility to it. It would be like um, if you've ever seen a pole vaulter, right? When they leverage themselves, the stick bends. Well, these mobility sticks are really long. And if we had a mobility stick, we would be using that, but we don't. So we're using our body. Go to the other leg, bend it. You're going to take the arm towards that leg because this arm is pushing the knee open. The other arm, open it, turn your head, keep driving this arm into the leg, twist the upper body, push the straight leg straightens and the bent leg bends deeper, full nice length, pull your body into a, as tight of a line as you can get it, which means that your head isn't forward. So where, how do you get your upper body stacked on top of your hips? And now release, relax. That's pretty intense on a lot of your parts. Walk out of it. I'm going to move my chair so that I can have my hand support, though I don't need it for balance. Just as a reference, put one foot up on your chair. I, I've mentioned to you guys this, um, this class that I teach at Indian Rocks Beach, and we're so lucky that we have this big open space and what is in the space are chairs. So my class, when I decide to incorporate a chair into the workout, we all have an awesome chair to use. So here we go. This is one of these things that I do in my class on Tuesday too. You can get as far away from your chair as you want to. Do you need your hand to be on the chair or do you have enough control of your moving part that you don't need your hands. So I've just now increased my stretch, even if it happened right before your very eyes and you didn't see it, I'm already doing it. Rock back to toes up, lay the foot down, bend in. This might be your stop point. And if it is, that's fine because it's still a nice hip flexor stretch. But if you can go further, you soften the back knee and you let your body come down. See what I am maintaining? This vertical line from my head to my hip, I'm not here. Okay, so drive it back, push, balance, pull the toes. Nice little hamstring stretch. We're adding on mobility, flow, and balance. Balance and flow, forward fold. Say hello to your hamstring. With your toes up, maybe you're even feeling a nice stretch all along the bottom of your foot. Lay the foot down, bend the leg. Maybe this is where you stop, but if you don't need to stop, then go deeper. Your hand can stay on the chair, right? Just like that. As you're coming into your forward position, if you're trying to test the waters, but your knee needs support, then you brace your hands on the chair, trying to offload some of the work that your leg muscles are doing, right? So we have two to three more. Look at your feet. Is your anchor foot turned out. This would be the common compensation for most, right? And then when you go to bend the leg, the knee doesn't like that. So you want your feet to track. Here we go. Into it. Down you go. Up you go. Pause. Forward roll. Say hello to your hamstring and your low back. Pull up, lay the foot down, raise the arm, squeeze your bun, pull your belly in, pull up, roll forward. Again, lay the toes down, reach the arms, sink into it, release, relax, other side. 
as you go into the other side, it's possible that you need to move to the other side of your chair. I don't know. I'm not going to move today. Okay, so here we go into it, the leg bends, just stopping here should get you that stretch across the front of your hip. But if you're like, I can do more, let the knee bend, let the other leg bend. How do you get aligned? Push up, pause, pull the toes from the chair. You're doing about five or six of these. Just go slowly. All right. When I'm not teaching class and I'm doing my own practice, I have generally I'm outside because I love to be in the park. Okay. And I'm using the playground jungle gym because it's a support that I can hook my bands up to and have band help for so many of these mobility movements. I don't need band help for this one, but there's a whole series of things that I do that we're going to add the arms now, right? So as you come into it, we've got about three more. When you push back, you're going to float the toes up if you can and forward roll. That should feel like just a huge extra stretch happening. Pull up, rock into it. So sometimes our environment, right? Places that we're going provide opportunities for us to take some of our gadgets and get some extra help. If you're not in the gym, you know, um, there are if you're wondering what in the heck is she talking about? I've mentioned to you guys these banded flexibility and mobility movements for ankles, hips, knees. And these are all the things that I do outside of class. I give you, this is your last one. I give you as many things in class as I can, but there's still some secondary things that are really useful to helping you get beyond what you're able to do in class. Release and relax, move your chair out of your space. How flexible do you need to be? Your flexibility is directly linked. Grab your book to, I sh I sh I'll rephrase that. Your overall strength is directly linked to flexibility. Joint mobility is different than muscle flexibility. I've been mentioning that I've been using the same book. So today I'm going with a slightly bigger book, right? And it's heavier. So I may have to revert back to my smaller book, but I thought today I'm gonna take the challenge for myself. If you have a mirror handy, go put yourself in front of your mirror. The book is absolutely heavier. It's probably twice as heavy as the other book. So it just that alone feels weird. If you're willing to take your extra little challenge, hardback, the hardback book is what you need. Go find a slightly larger book than what you used to using because it's going to make you carry yourself differently. Stand square for a moment. Maybe you're standing in front of your mirror. Okay, pull your belly in. I want us to work on getting our chin pulled back. When you tuck your chin, everything about the column of your spine, cervical spine, the rest of your spine kind of, kind of comes along and falls into where it's supposed to sit. So draw your chin back. You're going to do five or six of those. You don't have to stay still. You don't even have to, you know, turn and look at me. You could put your weight on one foot, but I want you to feel yourself jut your chin forward in the most wrong aspect and then pull it back. And as you pull it back, feel everything about yourself kind of lengthen, right? 
reach it forward. That's really bad posture. Pull it back. And as soon as you do that, you should feel like, oh, like my body is ready to mechanically move better. So once you get into your last pullback, hold the pulled back position and start walking. Can you activate navel to spine, buns tight, all right? I want you to walk with a swinging opposite forward arm to leg now. I'm going to finish my thought. When we had our stick in our hand, you just keep walking. When we had our stick in our hand and it was in front of our body, I said a lot of people are very unaware of the position that their arms are in, in relation to the rest of their body as they go about their day. As you're walking, if your hands are turned palms back, your shoulders are sitting in the wrong position. So you want to lift the shoulders, roll them back, draw them down, and let the palms rest facing your thigh, your side body thigh. That is your anatomically correct position. Palms forward we don't walk around that way, right? Most people have no concept of where they are. And for me, the more someone sits, you're gonna come into your space. When I see people's arms, men and women alike, like this, and they're walking and their arms are like this, the elbows are bowled out because their bicep, that bicep and shoulder and forearm is so tight and they've got that front head of the shoulder collapsed in, right? I call that Neanderthal man arms. And that might be a very mean thing, but I have tried to train my clients to identify when they catch a glimpse of themselves or any awareness that their arms are doing that to not just pull the shoulders back, but bring the neck back and try to get your body aligned. So you're standing in place. We are going to go raise the heels, roll the hands to their full palm out position, squeeze your buns. And then when you turn the hands, back into the thighs. So 180 degree rotation, pull the belly in. How, how high are you able to get off the floor? So don't roll the hand so that the palm faces back. Stop when it faces the hip line, start pulling yourself up, pull it up, tighten the buns, pull the navel in, tuck the chin, work your arms long, thumbs roll back with you in this full position, pelvic tilt, Oof. chin tuck and down. Again, roll, chin, pull it up, pull it up, pull it up, pull it up, squeeze, try to pelvic tilt, release. I fell out of that one, right? We're gonna do one more, pull it up. If your body only wants to partially commit to your heel lift, you'll know because you'll be kind of like moving up and down because you, you absolutely have the ability to go a little bit further, except it's going to challenge you balance wise. So extend through the elbows, shoulders are down, chin, zip, tuck. It's really hard. I fell out of it. It's really hard to maintain your lift, but yet if you can and put each component of your control, in fact, into place, you will go, oh, so much is working and release and relax. Let the buns relax. Maybe you put yourself back in front of your mirror again to check on, you know, did your book move? Do you need to readjust it? Cause we're getting ready to do something that's a little bit harder. Heel to toe stance. If your feet will not permit you to be in nice clean line and stable, then move your front foot, move the feet. So they're in a staggered stride slightly. Okay. <sighs> Slowly turn your head, pick a direction, squeeze your bun. 
you're not going to isolate to just one butt cheek being tight. You're going to try to squeeze them both. But I would think that the bun you'll feel the most on is the bun that goes with the trailing leg. You're just turning your head. You're trying to turn your head beyond and use your eyes beyond that point that keeps you in comfort zone. So I want you to rotate a little bit further without twisting the hips, right? And see if you can find the point where your body feels like it has to work a little bit harder to stabilize. And now slowly bring the head back around. Your legs, it's called time under tension. So as you stand here, to anybody witnessing what you're doing, it would look like you're just standing still. Only you know how hard it is to stay fixed, aligned, and still turn your head the other way. All right, pull the chin back, zip the buns up, abs and glutes. You're not just gonna stop at the first position that your head naturally stops at. You're gonna open your eyes. You're gonna try to rotate your head a little bit further, a little bit further, a little bit further, right? Squeeze your buns, bring your body back to neutral. These are all things that I give in my class, in my class, the live class, we don't have a book. So we do, you're gonna switch feet. We just do the movement, right? Without the book, the book makes things a little bit more true. The reality is that, you know, the head has to be kept in a certain place in order for you to really be in control. So the ribs are pulling back, the buns are tucking under, the butt cheek on the trailing leg should be the one that feels like it's fired up. Your legs should not be soft and buckled at the knees. Stand rooted so that you can zip up and feel like your body's drawing back into the trailing leg. It doesn't matter which direction you turn your head first, you pick, okay? So if you wanna make this a little bit harder, right? If that's possible and you have the thought that, I, why am I doing this in class today? Like this, we should be doing something other than this. Then if you're already getting slightly bored with this movement, what I want you to do is take the hand that goes with the arm that you've turned away from, okay? So that hand, push it away from your body and fold it behind your back. And you're gonna fold it behind your back in a way where the back of the hand is connected between your shoulder blades. What? So your palm is opened but the back of your hand is resting between your shoulder blades. So the fingers are pointed up and you're just gonna keep turning your head. Why would we put that arm behind us? Because I want you to pull the shoulders back to that side. Just turn your head, don't let your shoulder girdle twist. And now slowly bring your head back to center and you're gonna get to reference what I just talked about because when we do it to the other side, I want you to try to do it. So what I'm gonna turn around just to show you. If you opt for the arm, you're trying to get your hand up between your shoulder blades, shoulders down, right? And that's what you want to do. So as you go into your other arm, relax that one. I don't, I'm going to put myself back into the right position. Okay. And now turning the head the other way, take your free hand, the arm that goes with the shoulder that you're turning away from, move it away from your body, create the length, rotate it, and then work it up your back. You could even manually assist that arm up your back so it gets nice and high with the other hand and then lock in, chin tuck, 
zip and tuck, squeeze your buns, keep turning the head. And if your shoulders have rotated with you, bring the shoulders back to a squared position and try to only turn your head. For me, it's helpful to put one hand on my shoulder, squeeze the shoulder blades, bring your head back to neutral. You're almost done with your book. So release the hands. Since we're moving into the next phase, when we turn our head, the book might not have stayed in place. Baby, go back to your mirror. Do you need to reposition your book before you take off on the next thing? This is a walking three count step. So back away from the screen. Give yourself like enough working space so that we can take several steps forward, okay? As tight as you can have your heel to toe walk is what I want you to do. Every third step, you're gonna stop. Now, you can stay here and just pause or you can work a little bit harder by coming off of your heels and then bending both legs to whatever degree your legs will let you bend. Obviously you have to get back up. Put the heels down, walk three steps. One, you know the drill, stop. If you can, maybe you just go into your heel lift because you can't do the squat. If you go into your squat and the knees flare out, that's not the right track. You want the knees to track in, right? My back knee is actually pushing into the front leg for part of the movement, but maybe you get here. Where is the hang up? Chin tuck, right? Use your body, help yourself up, drive the heels down, forward walk. Do you have to add the squat? No. Why am I adding the squat? Because I want you all to realize that everything that we do that seems super basic has levels of challenge we can build the level in. Are you here? How do we keep the book on? How do we build the challenge in? I'm doing it right now, right? This is what joint mobility is. How do we move our body through different ranges of motion and still have everything intact? I've just demonstrated. It's different work. It's very different than sitting on a machine, right? Release and relax. What I just did as far as coming down, right? That might not be what your knees are able to do, but even just being on your knees, knee working, working around like this, doesn't seem like much, but with the book on your head, you're held more accountable for this true alignment. And then from your knees, and I'm getting ready to lose my book, from your knees, you being able to stand up out of a position requires a lot of you. Your book is done. Ready? I meant to challenge you. The things that, some aspects of what I do challenge me and drive me to find ways to teach. If you, if you don't have the bendability that my body has, which I don't think I have, um, advanced mobility. I think I've got a general command of mobility. You're going to get to try it for yourself. Okay. Spread your legs. Maybe you're standing watching going, what's she going to do? You know, the game leapfrog. How long has it been since you tried to do that? Didn't seem to be any big deal when you were a kid, right? Cause you were just jumping over someone else that was in front of you. So you have your imaginary person, right? except you got to get lower because you, you, you have to have some leverage. 
what does it take to get your legs apart and your body bent enough so that you can get your hands to the floor? How strong are your wrists? right? Maybe you're like, I can't compromise my wrists like that. So make fists. If you're wearing a ring with a stone on it, turn your ring inside and put your fist down. Is, is it, or I should say, are, are you able to move your hands and pull your feet to the outsides of your hands? Move your hands and walk your legs. And now stand up. So I'm going to run this back and forth here. That gives me three steps. Come up. You do not have to come up. I'm just transitioning because I don't have a whole lot of space. So this, this is the basics. How do you get your legs far enough apart so that your body can come down and you can lean into your hands and then step your feet forward? You're like, well, Michelle, that doesn't actually look like relief frog. Well, what happens if you're able to use both legs and come forward? Stretch the arms. Glide both legs forward. Stretch the arms. Stand up. Do you think there's any ab work involved with that? I should say, try it again. You can either slightly spring forward or do steps forward. Okay. So I've just shown you two versions. And if you're like, wow, I've never done that. I never thought to do that. If you want more, when you spring forward and you finally get, or you step forward and you finally get your feet on the outsides of your hands, can you drive your knees apart by the use of your elbows? And then your hips raise, and then your hands touch the floor, and maybe you spring, and you lower your buns, and your elbows are pressing the knees open. It doesn't matter how low you get. Come up, you're going to do one more repetition. So I've just put in three different elements of control. Either step the feet forward, spring the feet forward, but I want you to try to find a depth of a holding squat. Okay, so here we go. Spring forward, sit, pause, stand up, that's it. Grab your mat. That requires upper body strength, phenomenal control, your spine's ability to have just different angles of load without strain, wrists, shoulders, triceps, chest. Why is it so important that all of these parts be tight, that strong, not, I don't mean tight, I mean your ability to actually contract and use them efficiently. They're like, I'm never going to find myself needing that. Do you need to be so strong that you can, <laughs> if you were hanging from the side of a building, would you need the strength to pull yourself up? You know, do you need to be able to have pull up strength ability? I don't know. How much confidence do you have when you feel strong about yourself? It's huge, right? Offset, offset legs. I put my towel down. I don't need it immediately, right? But it's there. Okay. So trying to figure out which way to start this. Internal and external hip rotation. We know that most people are tight here. You're going to take the movement starts when you take your back leg and you raise the knee. And when you raise the knee, it's highly probable that your spine is gonna go into C curve. And then you're gonna raise the knee on the front leg and you're gonna use your bottom to swivel, right? And here's where the hang up is. I'm gonna teach you, hands down, don't move your feet. Let the legs then swivel the other way. And then no hands if you can. Take the trailing leg. Lift the knee. Try not to let the feet move into each other. The feet are staying anchored. Lift the knee. 
lift the other knee, swivel, swivel, here's ab, swivel, 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 and sit up. Now, you can move your feet a little bit away from your body line. This would be more considered like a 90 swivel. So instead of having the legs really tightly pulled in, cause that's really hard to swivel on, right? If your feet move away from your body, same aspect, raise the back knee, raise the front knee, the feet do not slide. They're kind of like just staying where you put them. Leverage yourself, whether you're using your hands to help guide the hips around and then no hands, raise the back knee, raise the front knee, lean back into C. If our hips were really mobile, then we wouldn't need to be in C curve. We'd be able to sit up straight, right? So that's where your hands come into play so that you can navigate your leg space. If you did 90 seconds of this every day, you would improve. Back knee, front knee, C curve. We know it's not good. Hands, push, roll it the other way. Back knee, front knee, use the hands as soon as you need to. So for me, this side, I've got more ability to get around my body in one direction. And when I go the other way, the mechanics are so much harder for me. Okay. Do one more to each side, lift the knee, lift the knee, right? I'm going to go ahead and set myself back into my assistant prop, prop up, swivel, do one more, pull it up, pull it up, hands, your feet want to glide, right? Release and relax. Okay. Side line. Oh, you guys, I'm so excited. I went on a little buying spree. <laughs> um, there are some things that I have wanted for, I'll say a couple of years. And I finally committed to three gadgets your pillow, your towel, your something. Okay. So you all, I keep referencing when I lay down, I have to have like some little support here for this mic. Ordinarily, I would stretch my arm and lay my head on, um, on my arm. So if you don't have any shoulder issues, open that arm. Maybe I'll see if I can work it there. Okay. And then I want you to kind of stretch your body so that you feel like you're in a straight line. And that might take a little bit of wiggling, okay? If you're using a pillow or your towel, you need it to be big enough so that you don't feel like your head, it, that your neck is getting a kink. And if you are using a pillow or a towel, then your arm will be contouring that object that's supporting your head. Okay. So that's your setup. Squeeze your buns. Take your bottom leg, bend it, let it come way forward and your top free hand that's going to hold and anchor your leg up. Okay. So now your bottom leg is straight. Your hips are probably rolled back. I want you to roll towards the forward leg and all that's doing is stacking the hips. Now straighten, straighten the top leg. You're going to let it bend and you're going to straighten it because I want you to feel the difference between soft knee and fully engaged knee. Bend, straighten. On the next straighten position, hold it. Now take your foot roll so that the heel touches the floor and then only the toe touches the floor. Don't forget your leg is still straight. Heel touches the floor, toe touches the floor, straighten the leg. Heel touch, toe touch, straighten the leg and pause. Now flex the foot. All of this to get you ready for the next position. You are going to barely lift your foot without turning the leg. Keep flexed, toe down, hips rolled, fully extended at the knee. And you're going to take your little leg and you're going to push it back. Now, Marlene, as a reference point for you, 
at the Sheridan, we used to do this movement where when you pushed your foot back, you would connect with the wall. That was your reference point. So I had your back turned to the wall. You were close enough to the wall that it gave you a target. So in our most ideal position, we all would be working with our back towards a wall. And as we lifted the leg and gave it that partial drive back, you would feel your heel touch the wall. So put that in your thought process. When your leg extends, pause, the heel connects with the imaginary wall, and then I want you to stiffen up at the quad more and then release. Barely lift, give it a slight push, belly to spine and full knee extension and down. Do one more. Push, full extension, zip and tuck, release, relax. A little quadriceps stretch. If you can get your hand to your foot, maybe you get your hand to your foot, but you can't arc the leg back, right? That has nothing to do with your quad flexibility. It has everything to do with the angle, all right? It's, and I didn't have you grab your strap, but you just do the best you can, right? If you're here and it feels good and you want more, add the bottom leg. The bottom leg just allows you to drive that hip into a more open position. By you opening the angle, but still keeping your foot, you increase the stretch at the front of that thigh. Pelvic tilt. Release, relax, flip yourself over, take your pillow. I'll bring my towel just for the sake of the exercise. We're going to be working, it's called your glute medius, okay? Most of us have, so your glutes, glute maximus, glute medius, glute minimus, three components. The glute has so much area to it and overlapping muscle structure, okay? Come on to your side, stretch yourself out. I'm not gonna use my pillow, I'm gonna use my arm. Nice full stretch. I'm laying on this imaginary straight line. We start with the imaginary straight line just to get everything stacked, right? And then you get to pull the bottom leg up. Okay, find your head position. Get comfortable. So here we are. You're going to take the leg, you're going to let the knee soften and then straighten, soften, straighten, soften, push. When I've set people up like this, one of the things that I check when I'm one on one with people is I want to see when I look at them, right? I uh, pick up your own head, you're going to run your own test. This leg that's supposed to be on the straight line in relation to your arm and your trunk, how far forward is this leg? Because if it's forward, it's already starting at the wrong spot. Take your top leg, pull it back so that from the hip, pit, hand, and foot, you're on a straight line. Just get into a straight line. Why does that seem so hard? And here we begin soft knee. Straighten the leg, soft knee, straighten the leg. Take your top hip, roll forward enough so that you feel this leg press into the floor as part of your anchor. Now keep the leg fully extended, okay? You're gonna let the heel touch the floor and then the toe touch the floor. Heel, toe, heel, toe. When we get the toe connected, pause, re-straighten the leg, roll the hip forward, zip and tuck, barely lift the foot and push it back, touch down. Lift, push back to your imaginary wall, touch down. Lift, push and pause this time, re-straighten the leg and touch down. Lift, squeeze, zip, touch down. 
why do we have to do movements that put us in such specifics? Like, this is not a big move. So much of um, control is required to move your leg without your back collapsing. So maintain this strong abdominal wall connection. Your toes need to be internally rotated in, in order for the movement to be hitting the correct part of your glute. Now push, do one more, push back, relax the knee, pull it forward, grab it if you can, rocker it back. All right. If you want more, take the bottom foot. The bottom foot is used to drive the top leg back. When you drive that leg back, if your back collapses, you probably won't have pain, but try pelvic tilting and then you'll understand how that increases your stretch. So if you're just pushing your leg, you're pinching across the back. If you pelvic tilt, you're maximizing your muscles ability to stretch, release and relax. Push yourself up. All right, sit on your pillow, your towel, your wedge, your Eric's pad. I'm gonna put my Eric's pad into the equation. If you, oh, get back to the gadgets that I bought. Okay, so three gadgets I've been looking at for a couple of years. <laughs> Maybe you guys have seen this thing. It is a, a thoracic back stretcher. What is that? It is this molded piece of plastic that allows the spine, very similar to what happens when we roll over the foam roller, okay, is it has four levels of adjustment, okay? So imagine this plastic thing laying on the floor, okay? And you adjust it up one level and it has a little bit of a, a dome, right? And you lay back over it. And then four different levels of gradient. So you can get your spine really bowed. That was one gadget. Actually, I bought four gadgets. The next thing was a similar to the thoracic spine. It's a cervical spine cradler, which allows the neck to be put in its anatomically correct position. The thoracic spine stretcher allows the spine to be put in its anatomically correct position, but based on gravity and age, our bodies start morphing into the wrong position. You're just holding your spread. You're trying to work your legs open, get propped up enough so that your spine is up and now forward roll. Third gadget, if you've ever heard of lymphatic, lymphatic, you've heard of your lymph nodes, right? Where are your lymph nodes? Pits, behind the knees, you've got nodes in the groin, like you've got lymph nodes all over your body, right? Side to side. So they make these compression leg sleeves, it's crazy, right? Um, that have a heating capacity at the knee. So essentially it's like this pliable boot that comes all the way up to mid thigh. You turn this gadget on and it compresses, like it fills up with air and releases. It compresses the leg and to improve circulation and lymphatic drainage. Okay, I've been wanting these for years. So finally I'm like, screw it. I'm just gonna get them. What would the fourth gadget be? <laughs> so it's a Chinese medicine um, gadget that is called the swing, S-W-I-N-G, the swing machine. Wait till these things come and Rich sees me using them. Anyway, he's going to get on them too. He just doesn't know it. You should be getting a stretch. If you're sitting on a little bit of a cushion, it is improving and increasing the stretch right 
behind the knee. Be really careful about evaluating the sensation behind your knee because there is the point of no return from a stretch. Like we don't want to strain the insertion point. So if you feel a stretch, that's one thing. If it feels like a strain, then you need to close the gap between your legs a little bit. We want stretch, not strain. Lean into it. Take your upper body, pry yourself open, pull the arm up. Does your arm need to be straight? It could be. Can you, with a straight arm, reach towards your foot a little bit without the arm hooking? It's more about you rotating. So use the bottom arm to pry into that leg to help open the trunk. And you're just going to hold here. So the fourth gadget is the swing machine. And the swing machine is a two aspects. You lay on your back and you put your feet in this motorized like little machine that takes your legs and does this, okay? And then you're laying on your back and your hips are on this little disc that allows you to not have weight bearing on the floor. It's weird, okay, that they work together. So this is where I'm going to incorporate my cervical spine gadget, and then my hips will be supported. I'm stretched out. My feet are in this in this cradle that takes my body and my body is going to be doing this. I can't wait to experience it. Why do these things fascinate me? And why would it be that I would spend my hard earned money on four gadgets like this? Because it's all about offloading the stress that gravity and impact has on our body. Stay tuned, I will give you updates. Here we are, the arm is pushing into the leg. You're gonna rotate your trunk. The other arm has this nice long reach to it. Oof, release, come into crisscrossed ankles for a moment. That should be kind of intense to get out of that, okay? So because my little towel happens to be handy, I'm going to do something that I suggest often. So often I say, build up your hip base. So not only do I have my Eric's pad, I've got another little cushion, right? And I'm going into crisscrossed knees. If you find yourself that you're somebody who, when you sit crossed ankles, that your your knees are like way up into your body, then you just haven't found the right level of elevation that allows your hips to open. Okay, so a few seconds here, we'll switch the ankles around and then we'll go to flat feet and then we'll be on our way. So you're just taking it all in. If you have tightness in your knees, maybe you're feeling your quads, you know, wherever you might have some sensation, maybe it's your ankles. What if it is your ankle? I can tell you when you pull your knee up, if you keep that leg down, like if you keep the foot down, but you raise your knee, it's such a great stretch across the ankle line. If you're feeling your ankles or you want to feel them in a stretch line, then raise a knee push the foot into the floor and get that stretch, right? Now switch the crisscross leg. So as a trainer, there's a, a really fine line when I work with people especially like in a class setting, it's a very different experience than, than the one-on-one, -on -one, right? With a one-on-one, -on -one, um, I have to be able to interpret nonverbal language. So I get to be very aware of when I give somebody something and they come out of it, are they grabbing? Are they 
Are they reacting to something that they did? How many times do you catch yourself like grabbing your neck, like you're, you're tight. What parts of you do you, when you come out of something feel like, oh, wow, that was like really hard. Okay. And, you know, I told you that I have this, um, multiple clients, but one in particular bottoms of feet together. This is what we're going to finish with for about 30 seconds. Okay. So just get the bottoms of the feet together pull the feet back to whatever feels like you're getting a comfortable stretch. If your spine wants to go to C curve, try to bolster yourself up. Even if that means you have to knuckle down and push your hands into your pillow that you're sitting on to help drive your stretch forward, that would be better than collapse spine and putting your head down low. So you want to keep trying to pull up. So I have a client who it's really hard for me to work with her because she's almost 90 and she has rheumatoid arthritis, a whole slew of things that are really hard for her. Just walking in general is hard for her. So when I think about taking her out and doing a little walk around anywhere, um, the walking is actually really damaging because her body is in such bad alignment and high inflammation, which feeds into the rheumatoid arthritis. Like as a trainer, what do I do with a person like that? I am going to start treating her with these lymphatic sleeves and take part of her training session, release and relax and have it be a little bit of um, therapy in a way that helps increase her circulation without having her needing to move more, which is kind of what seems counterproductive to what I'm being um, hired for. But I would rather her body in my hour with her to I would rather that her body, when I leave after having spent the hour, be in a, a state of relief versus taking her out, making her do squats and walking, like exacerbating a painful cycle. So um, not only am I going to try definitely work these gadgets on me, I'm going to see if they have any effect on her because like she's a good experiment. She's a good test subject for me. So stay tuned. I'll keep you apprised of that. And uh, Marlene, have a great day.